I don't know what's happening. There's like it's I'm just trying to make sure we're not echoing, but I want to make that sure. even it doesn't look like it's echoing. It used to be audio control stuff. It doesn't look like it's echoing. Yeah, we are echoing. Do we need to start the line again? Would you guys let us know both on Facebook and on Zoom if we are loud and clear or if there's an echo or anything, please let us know in the comments in the chat. Oh, the chat is disabled. Loud and clear, not echo. And the chat, chat is disabled. Why is chat disabled? <laughs> All right, that's fine. Okay. All right. We're confirming that even though we can't really hear anything, we are good to go. So, um, good evening. Welcome, everybody. It is that time of year. We are staring August dead in the face, which, for those of you who are familiar um, with makeover schedule, that means final entry time is upon us. So, I'm here, Sam Green, Executive Director of the Tech Resource Project with Raina Erasmus, who is our program assistant and secretary for the Thoroughbred Makeover. Um, so we do these webinars at around all of the major benchmarks that we have for the Thoroughbred Makeover. Uh, we realize that um, the paperwork can be somewhat intensive. That is because it is an event that is serving a charitable purpose. So there's more tied to it than a horse show. Uh, so we realize that we do ask a lot of you, uh, but we also try to make sure that we give you the support that you need to complete these processes. So. Today, we are here to review the final entry process, and the final entry is basically the catalyst for actually running this event. And the reason why it's so early is because we have uh, the fall issue of the magazine, it's a program issue for the makeover, and we have a print deadline to observe. So that forces us to do some of these processes um, a bit earlier on than you would typically for most horse shows. Um, so just a reminder that we are live in two places. We are on Zoom and we are on Facebook Live in the trainers group. So trainers um, on Facebook, please drop your comments and questions um, in the comments section of the stream. If you're over on Zoom, please use the Q&A Q function um, and I will be kind of helping to moderate as Raina walks through most of this information. Um, so just to get things kicked off, um, the kind of first step here, the do not pass go, do not pay $200, whatever, um, is that if you have not logged into our new website yet, now is the time. If you registered your horse a while ago and haven't looked at our, our website lately, um, we obviously launched a new one about a month ago and all of your records transferred, but in order to make sure that you restore all of that and everything gets mapped properly, you need to request a password reset when you go and log in. Do not create a new account. Use the email account that you had on our previous website. Use that to log in like you normally would and request a password reset. Please do that as soon as possible. If you have not done it already, if you are having problems, we want to make sure that we can get you sorted out as early and as quickly as possible. So please take a moment to do that if you have not already. Um, the other thing that I'll point out before we go through logging in, if you actually look under the Thoroughbred Makeover menu tab, um, there is a provisional schedule. And that may be helpful to you um, 
as we as you're going through uh, final entry and making some of your decisions. Um, we do have that provisional schedule up there. It doesn't have time and stuff blocked out. We can't do that until we complete this process, but this will give you an idea of what's going on what day during the week. So that is there for you as well. So, Raina. All right. So the first step, like we were talking about, is recovering your account. So if you haven't logged into your account on the new website yet, it's really easy. All the instructions are right here in red at the top. Basically, you're just going to come over here and enter the email address that is associated with your makeover entry. Um, a lot of you have multiple accounts. So if you try to log into one and you do the password reset and you don't see your makeover entries, it's probably because you're using the wrong email and it's the other email that has your makeover entries. So just type in your email over here. Do the I'm not a robot, robot remember me, whatever you want, and lost your password. And that's going to take you to uh, the page to enter your email and get the recovery uh, email to reset your password. Once you reset your password, you can log in. You'll be good to go. If you don't get that reset password email, email me and I'll set a temporary password for you. Um, so then you're going to log on in. And uh, that'll take you to the My Account section of our new website. You'll go to TV Makeover which will take you to the trainer portal. If you have not registered your horse yet, registrations close tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so do that now, right under actions next to whichever entry is applicable. You're gonna do register thoroughbred and hit go. If it tells you you've reached your max, then you've registered as many horses as entries that you've paid for. Um, you are welcome to come down here and withdraw a horse if you want to take a different one instead. And that will allow you to enter, to register a new one. Uh, but all of that has to be done by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Um, so once all that is done, uh, then we have the final entry form, which opens Monday, uh, August 1st, and it closes on Monday, August 15th. If we do not have a final entry form in for you by 5 p.m. on August 15th, your entry will be considered a scratch and will be withdrawn. So you really don't want to miss this process. I cannot like reiterate enough that this is the deadline where our staff really does not have a lot of room to compromise and accommodate. Um, we have a very tight turnaround, basically a week to process everything that comes in from these applications and essentially plan the event. <laughs> um, there is so much content that we have to get ready to go for the magazine, and we just can't have continual changes and moving targets with people coming in with late entries and that sort of thing. It's really, we need people to be honoring this deadline. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to walk us through the final entry form, um, and after that, walk everyone through the marketplace ad form and then the tip champs uh tip barrel champs form as well which will be done through us once all of that is done uh we'll do a q a session and we'll go over all of your questions so i'm just going to go right into the form now so that's that good complete your final entry button right there um and it's going to start off with your contact information and then there is the option for a trainer bio. Really simple. We already have all of your basic information, where you're from, your horses, like basic racing information, breeding information, all of that. But if there's anything extra you want to share about you, about your horse, uh, anything that you would like to be announced uh, during your trip, please put it in there. Not a guarantee that it will be announced, but you can absolutely add anything right there. I'm just going to chime in to add this final entry form for makeover stuff um, will have will be applicable to all accepted and pending horses, meaning that if you do a horse registration tomorrow and we haven't gone through and completed the like total review of it, that does not stop you from completing your final entry form. We always anticipate that we are going to have a little bit of a bottleneck because we do usually get a lot of a registration activity on the last day. It might take us a few days to clear that, but we're not going to make that hold you up in completing this final entry form. So it's one form, all active and pending 
courses. One shot. Yep. So each trainer has one form to fill out. So if you're bringing three horses, all three of your horses are going to be on one form. If one or all three of those horses are team horses and you're the team captain, they're going to be on this form. The team captain is the one responsible for filling out the final entry form for their team. The team members will not have access to the form in their portal. So it really is all on the team captain to make sure that the uh, final entry form gets in for that entry. Um, and once you pass the contact information in the trainer bio, uh, it's each section, it's going to go make you do it for each horse one at a time. So it'll, my horse's name is tester three, uh, but it'll let you know which horse you're working on for each section. Um, and it starts off with some training history. We just want to know if you had any setbacks um, and whatnot. So it's going to ask you how many rides and training sessions you believe you've had at this point. I'm going to go ahead and say greater than 120. Um, and then it's going to ask you how many off-site opportunities you've had, whether that's shows, clinics, schooling. Uh, you can go ahead and select that. How many of those opportunities were overnight? And then here is, did you experience any significant setbacks in your training plans? So if you select yes, it's going to ask how much time you lost. And you can go ahead and estimate there and the reasoning why. So was it due to personal reasons? Was it due to your horse's feet, gut health, et cetera? And then it's gonna ask you um, to, give us an average on how much you believe you've spent per month prepping that makeover horse. So if you're bringing multiple, it's per horse. Um, so this would, would be board, vet care, therapies, training, uh, whatever you believe the monthly cost has been for your horse up at this point. Then we get to um, the marketplace. So we have the ASPCA Makeover Marketplace catalog, which is in the fall issue of our magazine and online. So if your horse is for sale and you would like for them to be listed in the marketplace, this is where you're going to make indicate that to us. Uh, we also have a marketplace only option. So if you are no longer able to attend or if your horse is no longer able to compete, but you have registered them, you can mark them as marketplace only. That is going to uh, get rid of your options to enter disciplines, but you will be able to list your horse in the marketplace if that's something that you want to do. So once you decide if you want to include them in the marketplace, if you do, you can select uh, which level you want your listing to be. Um, and that is going to uh, bring you to the discipline selection. And you can only select one, like you can't have the same discipline for your first and second one, obviously. Some of the disciplines are going to have you select the test that you're going to be riding for dressage or the jump heights for eventing. Um, for bail racing, it's not there right now, but if you do select bail racing as one of your disciplines, it is going to ask you if you intend on cross entering the horse in tip champs, and you're just going to have to answer yes or no to that. Um, and later we'll go over filling out the tip champs entry form. So, and for freestyle as well, it's going to ask you to provide details on what your freestyle routine will be, what props will be included, and it does give you some information about what is not allowed. Um, and yeah, then, there's a good bit of like subtext and added clarity that we try to provide here throughout. So there's like, just additional information either linked out to the rule book, like, you know, what do these different levels of marketplace add offer me? There are like varying levels of exposure that you can pay for. Um, there's just additional context explaining like why we're asking this or like what we're trying to achieve um, by gathering this information. So just keep an eye out for those hyperlinks and stuff like that, because that's just some of that additional added context that you might find useful when you're filling this out. Yeah, I would say like, I know it's really easy to skip over reading the subtext, but I think for a lot of these, you're going to want to make sure you read all of it. Um, it can be really helpful and also just clear up some confusion. 
Um, and the other discipline that's going to have uh, an added part to it will be field hunters. Uh, if you're intending on entering the field hunter discipline, you will have to supply a letter um, from your is it your, master? your hunt, MFHA yeah. recognized hunt, your master exactly. saying that you fairly hunted. Um, I think within the last two years or something like that. Um, but I mean, I'll just touch on this briefly because it's just it's worth saying when we're having a conversation about what disciplines to pick. Um, there isn't really a discipline in this competition that's a ringer. Like field hunters, if you feel like your horse isn't stylish enough to be jumping in the hunters or the jumpers, field hunters is not the option for you because you're asking your horse to go out in a pack of at least a dozen other horses and go galloping and jumping in a group. And we get this a lot for competitive trail too. They're like, well, I can't, I don't really feel like I can do a dressage test, but maybe I can make it through competitive trail. Competitive trail is competitive. <laughs> um, so it's not that all of these things are tremendously hard, but just please bear in mind to respect the disciplines that you're entering in and making sure that your horse is really appropriately and adequately prepared for the selections that you're making. Mm -hmm. So if you do select field hunters, uh, down towards the bottom of the form will be where you upload your recommendation letter. If you don't have it on hand when you're submitting your form, that's okay. Uh, you can go back later to the portal um, and go to upload slash view documents under the actions column uh, under my applications and you'll be able to upload that anytime before the event. Um, if you have a team entry and you're selecting your discipline, it's going to have you indicate who is doing what phase of each discipline that you enter. And you cannot have the same person do both phases. I'll show you right now, it's gonna stop you and tell you that you can't have the same person doing the first and second half of competitive trail. Um, so you go ahead, select your test, select who's riding what, um, and if for some reason you don't see the correct team members populating there, you're going to want to stop, send me an email, let me know who's missing, and I'll get that fixed for you, and you can go back and complete that. So I'm going to scroll back up here to my first horse and just get those um, disciplines in. So this is going to be where you're going to select your jump height if you're doing eventing, show jumping, show, uh, show runners. Then you have the document upload section. So you can put your mic, your horse's microchip number here, uh, their Coggins, um, their vaccination record. Again, if you don't have all of this on hand when you're submitting final entry, that's fine. It's not a required field of the final entry form. You can go back to that. Uh, this time it'll be under upload view documents under your horse's uh, profile, which is under the My Entry section in the portal. Um, for the health cert, if you are coming from out of the state of Kentucky, your health certification is not valid if it is done more than 30 days of your uh, arrival date to the horse park. So don't get it done now. Um, Just skip it, you can yeah. go back and get to this. Same thing, you can upload that in the portal separately, not a required part of the form. If you are in the state of Kentucky and you have your health cert done now, you can upload that if you want it. I will say this is a very good time to just check on this paperwork and make sure that you have everything in good order. It says vaccination record. Make sure now is the time to check and make sure that your boosters are following falling in the timeline that is required and that your documentation for that vaccination is acceptable under our rules. We have had it happen that people have come to the horse park without sufficient vaccination records um, and have had to isolate them and tell them to go home. So please don't let that be the thing that keeps you from having a good weekend. It's yes. one thing that is very much under your control and you have a lot of time to take care of that still. And we have the dates in the portal for the earliest and the latest that you can have your horses um, vaccinated. And in the rule book is how we require those vaccinations to be proven to us. So we make it pretty easy for you. Definitely not something that you want to miss out on. Just so we don't have to do that all over again. 
All right. So same thing if you have a team. Gonna have to do it for every phase. All right. Uh, another thing with disciplines, um, it is $75 for a second discipline per horse. Uh, discipline one is worked into your original entry or application fees. It's the second discipline that is an additional fee and <laughs> it's totally optional. Yep. And they're in the rule book too, and it's linked on this form is a breakdown of all the final entry fees as well. So then we get to stabling and really important to note if you are competing in tip champs at the makeover with a non makeover horse, you will not pay for their stabling or indicate their stabling here on the final entry form. That's gonna be completely separate. Um, don't do it here or you're gonna end up paying for the stall twice. Yeah, just be mindful. Like if you are somebody, regardless of whether it's barrel racing or any other tip discipline that you're coming to do, just be mindful of how you're stacking your stalls. Like if you're in this form, just use this for makeover horses or like makeover non-compete horses because the subsequent tip forms are going to ask you about stabling again, and they are not talking to one another. You will get double billed for stalls if you stack up multiple stall reservations across multiple forms. So if you're having any trouble with that, like if in doubt, just pause, call and ask. We'll just help you determine like if you're covered in some configuration. Uh, so we're going to ask you to indicate which day you plan on arriving. And if you plan on arriving later than 4 p.m. on Tuesday, you're going to have to email me, contact me directly to make arrangements for check-in and for completing your arrival exam. Uh, and this is really only still applicable to makeover horses. Mm -hmm. uh, the arrival exam, like tip horses and non-compete horses are not subject to that. Um, but this is giving us an idea of how to staff uh, the arrival exam on the days that it's available. So if you're for whatever reason not going to be on site, we need to know. Uh, stalls are 200 each for the whole week. Um, and if you are not going to be stabling your horse at the horse park, it is $40 each to ship in. Not each, it's per trailer. Per trailer, yeah. Okay, that's, yeah, we need to fix that. Um, so if you end up selecting more stalls than you have horses, it's going to ask you if the stall is for a non-compete horse, which really it should be if you are selecting, like we offer tax stalls separately. So you should not be entering, you should not be selecting more stalls than you have makeover horses, unless it is for a non-compete, non-tip champ horse as well. Uh, so you'll go ahead and select yes, if that's the case. And it's going to ask for the horses gender and name on the Coggins um, and just be prepared to have all the same health paperwork for that horse as you would for the makeover horse. It's not going to go through the arrival exam, but it's still going to need to follow health certification, Coggins, vaccination records. Um, if you are doing a tax stall and you're sharing that tax stall with somebody, you'll go ahead and list their name here. But if you are sharing the tax stall with someone, only one of you needs to declare that tax stall on your final entry form, or it's going to be the same thing with tip stabling, where you're both going to pay for the stall and you're going to end up having two tax stalls. So just make an agreement with whoever you're sharing that tax stall with about who is going to put it on their final entry form, and you'll go ahead and list the names of the people you're sharing it with here. And it's the same thing for your stabling request. Um, if you want to stable with some people, please keep that to the people that you are hauling to the horse park with um, or that you're sharing tax stalls with. We will do our best to accommodate stabling requests, but if you have a giant group, um, I really can't make any promises. Um, and you guys will all just want to come together and agree for one name for your stabling group. If you all come in and start naming different people, but you all want to be together, like it's really hard for me to piece that together. So just come up with one stabling group. You can have one person's name or some fun group name that you come up with, whatever it is. All of you should put the same exact thing in this box if you want to be stable together. 
try to be concise for those of you that have ever had to do a seating chart for like a wedding or something like that. This is that turned up to 11 and like straight from hell. It's like literally having to piece together who needs to be with who and you get these long strings of like, you know, 15, 20 stalls of like associated people and it just becomes a like monumental task. And the more that you can do to be concise about what your needs are here and just to be reasonable about them, please. Yeah. Um, the more we can do to get you in a good situation. That will bring us to the end of the final entry form. Um, it's where you'll submit, you'll see how many, like what your total is. It links directly to the rule book if you have any questions. So it is a $20 schooling fee per makeover horse. There is also now a $7 drug testing fee per makeover horse. So if you're wondering why Those the are, total yeah. is looking a little strange, looking a little different from last year, it's because of the seven dollar drug testing fee, yeah. um, and they're just auto populated on that form. You didn't make an election anywhere that's dictating that, so just be aware of that when you're trying to kind of look back and tabulate if everything's correct. You've yeah. got that twenty dollars and seven dollars per horse that yeah. are being tabulated automatically. Yeah, every everything else is going to be your second discipline fees if you have them, your marketplace fees, and your stabling fees. So payment, unlike last year, this year it is due at the same time final entries close. It is due at 5 p.m. Eastern on August 15. Um, we will not be invoicing people for unpaid fees this year. You will do it through the portal. And if you haven't paid by that date, your final entry form is considered incomplete and it will be withdrawn. So please do not forget to do that. And I'll see. Okay, so it will direct you, this is, ignore the total for now, um, but it's gonna direct you to check out. So you can go right there and check out, or if you're not ready to pay, um, as we'll get to, you can stack your uh, tip barrel fees with your final entry form and pay it all at once. You can just go back to the portal, that pay final entry fees button is gonna be right there. Um, so just like a word about this, um, because this is being treated as like a product purchase in our store, you will be able, you'll get a receipt for it and it'll be in your purchase history in your account. So that's a little bit of an upgrade from what was previous um, because our processes were very separated. This is kind of pulling it all in um, and it will allow you to save a credit card on file in your account as well. Um, but just Every time, like if you hit that pay final entry fees, like again and again, it will keep adding it to your cart. Whatever your total is due at the time, mm -hmm. it's gonna keep adding that. But what you can do is yeah. you can edit your cart and edit, like remove occurrences of entry fees or like update quantities of entry fees. So yeah, see, just bear that in mind, here, but you can card. see in hers, like she has her final entry fees and her tip championships fees, like stacked in the same part mm -hmm. so you have the option of you can go through and do all of your makeover paperwork you can turn around go do your tip stuff it'll put it all in the cart for you and you can go ahead and pay it all in one swoop but you do need to go ahead and push that cart through um, before the 15th or if you're having problems with the cart you need to contact us before the 15th or yeah, 15th. yep and once you do submit your final entry form you can still make some updates to it uh, you will have that update your final entry form button. Pretty much the only updates you can make are to the listing option. You can upgrade your listing option for the marketplace and for jump heights or test selections. You cannot actually change the discipline you're entered in. If you want to change it, you're going to have to email me um, and I can help you with that. Um, and you can also add stalls, but you wouldn't be able to remove any either. Uh, same thing for this. I mean, changes are open until September 9th, uh, but if there's any payment associated with those changes, so if you're adding stalls, if you're upgrading your marketplace listing, which I don't really know if they even can upgrade it at that point, because marketplace listings close on the 15th. Yeah, marketplace, you so, really 
like that's one of the intensive things that is so critical for the print deadline for the magazine that we really don't have a lot of wiggle room there. Um, so you can edit this, use this form to edit your final entry anytime until the ninth, um, but not the marketplace listing option. You can only edit until the 15th. So if you have any edits that you want to make after the ninth, you will have to contact me directly and I will try to help you if I can. Um, Second discipline fees and stabling fees are fully refundable up until September 9th. Refund requests will have to be emailed directly to me, but if you do make that request because you have to withdraw for whatever reason before the 9th, we can refund your stabling and your second discipline fees in full. Uh, marketplace fees are non-refundable after August 15th. If you need to withdraw between September 9th and October 6th, we can refund your stabling and second discipline discipline fees minus $50, but again, you're gonna have to make that request in writing. And like just another piece on this, like these are the fees that are refundable. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk a lot about how your application fee is non-refundable and contributes to administration throughout the year. These are all the fees that are very much like contingent on you making it to the event. And so we do have a pretty generous refund schedule. That in mind. Take advantage of that if you are somebody that is a little bit on the fence about your course and like you just want some more time. Go ahead and complete your final entry form, pay the fees, and then make a decision when you get closer to the refund schedule running out in your favor. Um, that would be like my honest like suggestion to you is like a strategy that would work to your benefit. Yeah. You've already paid for your application fee, which you cannot get back, but a lot of this you can so you might as well go through the process and buy yourself a little bit more time to make that decision uh the next step for those of you that are planning on listing your horse in the marketplace you're going to want to scroll down to the my entry section go to the appropriate course use this actions drop down menu and go to update slash create marketplace listing um this will bring you to the form for your marketplace ad so there is the online description and the magazine description. The online description can be as long as you want, you can say whatever you want, uh, but the magazine description, which will be going in the print version of the catalog in the fall issue of our magazine does have a character limit of 150. Um, you're really just gonna wanna keep this to the important stuff. We have all your horse's basic information, height, gender, color, all of that. So don't waste your characters on that. That'll already be in the ad. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, then you'll go ahead and check off what you think your horse shows potential for. You can make some notes on previous injuries. Um, let us, you know, let the buyer know if uh, there are radiographs available, what you intend on uh, listing the horse for, for sale. If you have any videos, you can put the links here as well. Uh, wherever the horse is located, obviously you're gonna put that here too. Um, and then for who is the primary contact for this listing? So this is gonna populate with whoever you want, like whoever, who the person should call if they're interested in trying your horse. So if you are the owner, um, owner is fine. If you're not the owner, but the owner is the person that you're going to want them to contact, obviously you're going to select owner as well. Um, agent might be you if you are the one competing, but you're not the owner and they should still contact you. It gets a little confusing here. If you have any questions about who you should select for that part, uh, just send me an email and I can help you out. Um, if it's through an adoption organization, you're going to uh, list that out and you're going to um, describe any uh, the adoption process and any restrictions. And we just did a um, webinar about, not even like two weeks ago about putting together good advertising and marketing for your horses. Um, that's available uh, on our YouTube page. It's also on like the main RRP Facebook page. Uh, please take some time if you haven't worked with our marketplace before just to go and have a look. Um, there's just a lot of really good information about putting together um, good copy, good descriptions, taking good photos. Um, you know, the marketplace serves as a little bit of a yearbook 
um, it's a good cross section and a representation of the horses that are coming through our program. Um, and please let us help you to make sure that you're representing yourself in the program well. You want to talk a bit about the adoption barn? Yeah. Um, the other thing that's new for this year is uh, through a, ASPCA has been the longtime title sponsor of the marketplace at the Thoroughbred Makeover. Um, they, through the Right Horse Initiative, are doing an expansion of that and offering an adoption barn. Um, so they are taking over barn five. Um, and that is going to be full of horses, uh, full of thoroughbreds um, at any stage that are available to for adoption through Right Horse Adoption Partner Organizations. Um, that is open for registration. There's information on our um, up in the like thoroughbred makeover menu about that. Um, there's a very simple like organization registration process, and you can book for free stalls at the makeover and benefit from having the kind of tip championships going on at the same time as the makeover. It's just going to be crawling with thoroughbred lovers, um, and it's a completely free to participate option for uh, organizations that are working with the Right Horse Initiative. So check that out. If that if you work with an organization that would be um, eligible to participate in that, there's more information on the site. We'd be happy to help you with any questions you have on that. Great. Right. So the next step here is going to be the tip form. So if you are intending on competing in the tip barrel racing champs, you will do that through us. If you are not planning on competing in tip barrels, but you're doing another division offered at the makeover for tip champs, that's going to be through tips website, not through us. Uh, you will be able to select a second discipline if barrels is your first through us, but you cannot enter disciplines other than barrels through us. If that is clear. So any combination, like any horse rider combination that is including barrels in their tip championship selection can do their registration through us, whether you are cross entering a makeover horse or you have other horses, we can handle the registry and the, um, and the stable re requests for those horses. But you do, if you have additional horses that are doing other disciplines, you do still need to go through that site. So again, that's kind of one of those spaces where just because we're working across organizations and different databases and stuff, just be careful about how you're proceeding with these selections and particularly the stabling because there's no way for us to program a catch if you're duplicating your stable request. Um, and same thing, these forms, both on our website and on TIP's website, will close on August 15th. So if you want to compete in TIP Champs at the makeover in any form, you're going to have to get that done by August 15th. Uh, the TIP form, unlike the final entry form, you have to complete it per horse and rider combination. So you're not going to be able to enter more than one horse on the same form. So once you enter the form, you can complete it for one horse, submit it, and then go back if you have another horse that you're planning on competing, and you'll have to fill it out again. Um, same thing, basic information. It's going to ask you what your trainer status is. Yeah, it's going to be pulling in. If you're a makeover trainer, it's going to pull in your makeover trainer information. If you're just a straight tip entry, um, you do have to have a user account and it's going to pull in your information per what's on your user account. Um, same thing, you have the option to uh, add a competitor bio if you want it. For your horse, it will pull in your makeover horses if you have them. So you can just easily select one of your existing makeover horses. Or if you're going to add a horse, a non makeover horse that you're planning on competing in tip, just select add a new horse, enter all their information. Super easy. Uh, you're going to need a tip number. You can add your micro tip number if you have it. Aftercare organization, if that's applicable. Obviously, your first division is going to be barrel racing. If you're doing the form through us, then you can select any of these disciplines as your second discipline, if you're choosing to do one. Uh, and you also have the option, if you want, of uh, adding a single halter class to your entry. Also not required, but that is an option for you if you 
but like it. It's a required field. You have to say skip it, but yeah, you have to say edit it, if you yeah. But um, same thing. You have the horse documents section. Um, I believe. Well, if it's for a makeover horse, you can very easily add it later. Uh, and it should populate a horse form. If it is not for a non-makeover horse, and you'll be able to add that later as well. So to stabling, if you're doing this form for a makeover horse that you've already paid for stalls on, you're just going to want to leave everything in zero. If you did the whole add a new horse thing, this is going to be where you're going to add your stall for that horse. Um, if you are bringing non-compete horses that weren't on your final entry form, you can add them here and you can submit the form and it is most likely going to do to the waiver. So you're going to have to submit a waiver if you're planning on doing tip champs. Even if you already did a participation agreement, it's with us at the beginning of the year that did indemnify tip. We had to make some revisions and updates for their waiver, so you have to do it again. I'm oh, sorry. Shouldn't be too hard. Just make sure you get that submitted. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. But same thing, you're going to get that pay tip entry fees button, and it's going to take you to the cart and it will have both your tip and your final entry fees and you can go ahead and get that in. push that through yep um one thing that we um just toggling back to makeover related entries we do have um special awards which are added prize money uh funded by particularly like state breeders groups or um particular groups of tracks and that sort of thing. So um, there's information about which awards are available um, in the thoroughbred makeover section of the website. Um, if your horse meets the eligibility criteria for any of those awards, they will be auto-nominated. Um, most of the information that is like the eligibility criteria is stuff that we have captured as a part of your horse registration. So we will be going in and tagging them uh, so that they get tracked for any special awards that they're eligible for. And there will be scoring and stuff available for that throughout the event. Um, I also feel like we're just really underselling the marketplace. <laughs> like we're just very, we're very routine about like what it is and how to do it. Um, but it's actually, um, sorry, um, a really very unique and one of a kind shopping um, opportunity because um, Yes, there is an online catalog. Yes, there is a print catalog, but your horse is identified throughout the event as being a part of the marketplace. So if your horse is seen in an arena, your um, bridle, your competition numbers will indicate whether or not the horse is for sale. Your stall cards are gonna say if the horse is for sale. Um, we have Haggard uh, Equine Medical Institute like on staff ready to perform PPEs. We have a dedicated trial space. Um, and ASPCA pays um, through that grant um, for a tremendous amount of marketing. We make sure that every horse that's in the catalog gets shared on our social media channels leading into the event. Um, and we do a mailing. We just did a bulk mailing to 20,000 people saying that they could sign up to receive the catalog for free in the mail. Um, so we're you know, sending out 10,000 copies of that catalog between what's going to be available at the event and what's going to go out and mail to subscribers and other people who signed up. So it's a tremendous amount of exposure. We also have cross listing partnerships with other um, listing organizations. So it really is absolutely worth the money. Even just the standard listing is a tremendous value. If you wanted to go with a featured or premium, that will get you some additional, like more space in the print catalog or you can even have your horses listing up on the Jumbotron in the main arena. So there's a lot of value packed in there. Um, and it's we've done a lot of work to get the word out. Um, and I'm sure if you asked in the makeover trainers group, you would get a lot of people that would say it would be worth the money. So um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we have trainers who apply for the makeovers, submit a trainer application, pay the trainer fee, with the intent of listing their horse's marketplace only, yep. because that's how good of an exposure your horse will get. Yep. So 
it is absolutely worth it. If your horse is for sale, you should you should take advantage of that option. Okay. Okay, so that is kind of the rundown of like the administrative piece. Um, we do send out another email kind of outlining most of what we covered here today. We'll include the recording of today's um, webinar to go back to for reference. Um, I'll just cover a couple of other things just because they're relevant as you're kind of starting to make plans and travel and all that sort of thing. Um, so move in is Monday, Tuesday. You cannot arrive earlier. If you arrive earlier, it's like you're arranging for layover stabling through the horse park and that's outside of this agreement. So um, typically move in day, I, they usually say that they'll have stalls ready by like eight, nine or 10. It kind of depends on the show that's moving out previous. Um, we will let you know when stabling and um, check-in is going to be open on Monday. Um, so Monday, Tuesday, we're running check-in, we're running arrival exams. Um, for us, uh, Monday tends to be like a course building day. So um, with the intent that by Tuesday, we're going to have ticketed schooling open in those competition venues where we have that available. So that's going to be um, the hunter ring, the jumper ring, and the eventing jumper ring will all have ticketed schooling as well as Rolex in the covered arena. Um, we also have dedicated time in the covered arena for barrel racers and um, and prop schooling for freestyle people in the evening on Tuesday night, I think. Um, so that's the opportunity for the people that have loud stuff and weird props and things like that to have a run through in that space. Um, so Signups, uh, prop schooling is a sign up for a time scenario that will be available when you do check in. Um, and uh, barrel racing is just that's included in your entry. You don't need, you still get your tickets the same way you would. Um, and then there's the dedicated time for um, uh, open schooling. And then they, they do put the barrels out for everybody to do an exhibition run as well. So that's an opportunity as well. Um, stabling, oh, and arrival exams. Um, there's extensive information about this in the rule book. Um, for those of you who haven't participated before, every horse that is uh, starting competition has had their body condition and soundness in hand at the walk, verified temperature, pulse, and respiration, all of that sort of thing. There will be a webinar on preparing for that shortly, um, but everything that you need to know about attaining the uh, standards required for that is detailed in the rule book. Now is a really good time, like we were talking about vaccinations and health papers and all that sort of thing. We're, you know, about 70 days out. Now is a good time to touch base with your vet and say, hey, this is what's going to be checked. Do you feel like I'm in good shape or you know, do you need to make an adjustment? Um, there tends to be a lot of anxiety over body condition and shipping. Um, water weight and body condition are not the same thing. Um, and our vets can tell the difference. So just bear that in mind. If your horse needs more condition, you still have a little bit of time to deal with that. But now's the time to have that conversation. Um, stabling. Um, oh, and I, sorry not to interrupt you, but they can't school or they at least can't do ticketed schooling until they pass their arrival exam. No, we can't because there's like, we aren't, you can school. But you can't do ticketed schooling, right? You need your sticker on your bridle. No, because no. we just, we don't, we don't want people to miss a schooling opportunity because okay. like if we get behind with vet checks, like we will let you okay. do ticketed schooling. Okay. Um, we just don't want either one of those to adversely impact the other. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't want somebody to miss their schooling opportunity because of vet schedule. Um, general stuff about stabling, um, you do not have to strip your stalls, which is great, but you don't get anything. Um, there is no bedding provided. There is no stabling supplies provided, like not even a hose, a wheelbarrow, none of that. Um, so you need to come ready to supply all that stuff. Um, there is a tractor supply, uh, like one exit up the highway in Georgetown, if you forget anything. Um, there's also Deaver on the horse park grounds, which will gladly sell you pretty much anything that you need, including hay and feed at a premium. Um, so that is there as well. Um, Deaver is also the vendor that handles golf cart rental. Uh, Deaver is also the vendor that handles paddock rental. And by paddock, I mean 
dry round pens. So like, let's just be clear about what those are. There's always a lot of hysteria over trying to get rentals on those. There's not that many of them. There might be a dozen, they sell out quickly, but they're really truly just round pens. If turnout is that much of an issue for you um, and your horse, I strongly suggest looking into layover facilities. There's a lot to choose from in the area. And if your horse really needs time outside, um, going as a ship in or just paying for a stall for the day and then going home at night is a really excellent option. Um, and I think truthfully more bang for your buck than paying for a round pen. Um, the stalls are 10 by 10 um, on full panel stall doors, um, bars over the top um, and unmatted concrete. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways that you could go about solving for that. There's people that put straw down as a base, people that put down the, um, the pelleted stuff as a base. Um, I've seen people bring their own stall mats. I've seen people rent stall mats from Beaver. I've seen people buy those little foam like puzzle piece gym, like kid play mats and put them down. I've seen people just buy a cheap rug <laughs> and put it down and throw it out. There's a lot of different ways that you can solve for that. Um, and you do not have to strip when you leave the stalls, but please also don't strip yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, fire code is another big one for the horse park. Um, you shouldn't have anything in the barn aside from maybe a cell phone charger that doesn't have a three prong like grounded electrical plug. Um, they also really don't want you having any kind of like small appliances or anything like that that produce heat microwave, coffee makers, um, space heaters, that sort of thing, really not cool. Um, your box fans, they need to be grounded. They can't be the box fans that have the two prong plug. Um, and you just need to be mindful about how you're configuring your electrical cords because they shouldn't be going under stall doors and getting pinched in stall doors and that sort of thing. Also, you're not supposed to daisy chain um, surge protectors and plugs together. So. Um, that's fire code. Um, and then some of the kind of like fun ancillary stuff. Um, so last year we dispensed with it, but it will be back. We do have a competitor party slash awards dinner on Friday night. Uh, we're gonna be doing that in the big barn, um, which is right there on the Kentucky Horse Park grounds. We will have bar, we will have food trucks, we'll have live music and we will be doing our awards there. So if you're familiar, um, we made an adjustment to where we're giving awards based on um, preliminary competition. So outcomes of uh, Wednesday and Thursday, that's those results are what we're gonna be awarding those special awards on as well. So that's all gonna be an awards dinner on Friday night at the horse park. Um, we will have some kind of incentive or break for makeover trainers. Um, but a, a limited amount, we'll have more information on that shortly, um, but that will just be a good time. It'll be good to have a party again because we haven't had one since 2019. Um, as far as tickets go, it, uh, attending the finale of the Spectator, no longer, um, no cost, totally free. Um, there is VIP viewing of the finale, which will be available at a cost. Um, if you are going to the finale, if you're in the top five of your discipline, you're going to have a busy day on Friday. You do have to jog your horses. There will be a competitor briefing. There will be arena familiarization on Friday. So just bear that in mind, but we'll get all that stuff out of the way in time for you to come to the party too, because obviously in your top five, you're going to be getting awards at the awards dinner as well. Um, extracurriculars, uh, this is also a national symposium. So we have the aftercare summit is returning. Um, we're working out the topics for that and exact scheduling. Um, Friday is a dark day for competition, but that's also education day. So we have the Thurber Makeover Masterclass in the morning um, and seminars presented by the horse in the afternoon in the club lounge. Um, so that is, should be on your dance card. I will also have Thursday night stall decorating contest will make its return. Uh, details on that forthcoming. Sign up for that will be at check-in. Um, and then because it is a charity, I would be, um, it would be an unfortunate miss for me not to ask to give back. Um, we will be launching volunteer sign up shortly. 
Um, if you're staying with friends for TIP or anything like that, we will absolutely be needing help. Um, whether you want to do a simple menial task or you want something more involved, um, there's options for everybody. Um, we're also starting to accept um, donations for our silent auction. We have a large silent auction in the trade fair in the covered arena uh, running throughout the week, and we are actively looking for memorabilia, art, experiences, cool gifts, you name it, we would love to have it. So please, if you have any leads on that, let us know. Um, we also do our fund a need campaign, which is a way to do kind of very um, low cost, like kind of entry level sponsorships. You can sponsor a jump, you can sponsor some floral, you can sponsor a set of ribbons. Um, you can buy a congratulations ad for your friend or family member in the program, that sort of thing. So silent auction and fund and need stuff, it can be directed to Juliet Putin. Um, so, questions? <laughs> questions, that was a lot. It always is. Yeah. There's a lot of parts. Let's look at Facebook. Yeah, I have. Outside shavings are allowed. Mm -hmm. um, stall fans need to be still the three prong plug. Uh, so your typical box fans are gonna be an absolute no-no. Uh, you need to go and buy an upgraded one with a grounded plug. So it's 7 p.m. Eastern. So it did start at 7 p.m. Eastern, but you might be in a different time zone, Leslie. Uh, but this is recorded, so if you missed the first hour of this, you'll be able to go back and watch it later. Um, Jennifer wants to know how many exhibitors leave Saturday morning if they don't make the finals. If you leave early and you are in the top 10 and you miss out on awards, are they all given Friday night? So um, the top 10 awards from preliminary competition, you will have the option if you are not staying, you can pick up your ribbons um, a little bit later in the morning on Friday. Um, but they won't be available until like protest periods and stuff first close first scores um, close on Friday. Uh, we also do top ten um, uh, like junior amateur team. Junior amateur team. That's all going to be given out at the awards dinner as well. Um, and we also parade all of these people in the finale. So if you're in the top ten, like even if you didn't, even if you weren't top five, we do top ten awards presentation like victory gallop type thing in the finale so um if you want to get out of there like i can't really blame you it's expensive if you have if you want to get home like no harm no foul but we would also be really happy if you would stay and finish out the week with us too so and if you for whatever reason can't stay until ribbons are ready for pickup you can pay to have them mailed to you after the show yep. Are triple checking as long as my intended makeover horse is showing under my entries in the makeover tab, the horse is considered registered for the purpose of tomorrow 5 p.m. registered deadline. Yes. Yes, that's correct. If for some reason the status is listed as kept after makeover or something other than pending, waitlist pending or accepted, you should reach out to me and let me know. But if you're, the horse that you're planning on taking is listed under my entries, you're good to go. Winding uh, down, any other questions? We have a question about congratulations ads. So congratulations ads, that's gonna go through our uh, development manager, Julia Oten, uh, J Oten, J O U G H T O N at the RRP.org where you can call the office and she'd be happy to help you with that. The recording of this webinar will be available uh, on YouTube and in the trainers group. Good on Zoom. Do we have to enter the membership number or is it pulled from the job club? Uh, you will need to enter that membership number. Uh, you'll want to scan your horse and see if they have a microchip first um, and then go ahead on the Jockey Club's website and make sure that microchip number is registered with them. As long as it is, you're gonna input that number 
uh, on your final entry form, or you can use, uh, if you don't have it at the time of submitting your final entry form, similar to uploading your Coggins, there is an update registration numbers option on that actions drop down menu. You're going to hit that and that's where you're going to enter your uh, microchip number. If your horse doesn't have a microchip number or a microchip, you can order that through us, through the Jockey Club. Um, and you'll have to make sure that you go in and register that microchip with the Jockey Club and then uh, update it with us. So if your horse is older than 2017, check first. It may have been inserted at some point, but it, starting with horses 2017 and younger, they should already have a microchip. Um, but it's never a bad idea to check. Um, and if it's there, you just jot it down and you can record it with us. And if it's not, you can always add one. But we don't have, regardless of uh, their age, we don't have their microchip number unless you give it to us. Yeah. So we will ultimately be making an inquiry with the jockey club, like as we get closer to audit against what they have versus what we have. And then it will be checked when you arrive at the main number. Um, so that is how we go through the process of like verifying identification. So you need to get that done and reported with us and reported with the jockey club ahead of time. So Hillary wants to know the advantages and disadvantages to doing one discipline versus two. Honestly, that's very much like a personal decision and it depends on where you and your horse are at. I think if you're traveling a long way um, and you think your horse can safely and successfully do a discipline other than the one that is your primary discipline, make the most of your trip and add another one. Um, but if you and your horse have been focusing entirely on dressage and you haven't done any obstacle work, uh, I wouldn't just throw a competitive trail in there just to do it. But if you are confident you're going to have time to get your horse over some obstacles, get some practice with that before October, and it's something you're interested in doing, do it. Same thing if you're doing hunters and you really like to ride in, in the Rolex and give dressage a chance. Like, absolutely go maybe take a couple dressage lessons learn training too and uh add it but if it's not something that you think your horse can handle don't do it there's no pressure to do a second discipline obviously it's going to give you more free time if you're only doing one discipline um definitely more planning it's going to be a little bit of a busier schedule if you're doing two but if you can and you want to make the most of your time at the makeover absolutely you can do two discipline. I would generally agree with all of that. My my big thing is that this is meant to be a showcase of the breed and all of its capabilities, and that's why we offer so many disciplines. Um, and it, we've had a lot of people that have had great success kind of doing some discipline crossover and trying something new. Um, the people that have done well at that have taken it seriously and have dedicated a considerable amount of time to learning that discipline you know we're talking like show dumpers and inventors that have entered the ranch work division or the competitive trail division um so my big thing is yeah i would absolutely maximize my time and enter two if my horse was ready and properly prepared um if not i would just seriously consider like it's sticking to one it's Me better too. to do one well than do two <laughs> but if you can dedicate the time to learning the second discipline, I mean, it's a great opportunity for you to learn a second discipline and maybe get into an area of riding that you didn't know that you were going to love. Um, but if you don't have the time to really invest in that second discipline, then I would stick to whatever you and your horse have been working on and will be the most prepared for. Um, on Zoom, this is a good question from Ava. She asks, how late can you arrive on the 10th? The horse park doesn't close. You can come and go at any hour of the day. There is no gate. Um, will somebody be there to help you? Will the check-in area be open? Uh, no, we will probably not have check-in open any later than like 5 or 6 p.m. both days. Um, Tuesday evening, we have briefing usually at 6 p.m. Um, so we're gonna be driving everybody over to participate in briefing. Um, so we're, and we're not going to stay there all night to do check-ins and that sort of thing. So availability and arrival exams is going to be limited. 
uh, to kind of like normal like business hours, so to speak. Um, but you coming and going, there really is no limitation on. And Leslie wants to know, is dressage first for the eventing entries? Um, if you're asking like phase wise, yes, it's the it's going to be run like a short format horse trial. You're going to have dressage first, then show jumping, and then straight into cross country. If we arrive after hours, where will the stabling chart be? Stabling chart will be online. Yep. Stabling charts are online and available well ahead of time. Uh, hopefully we'll have stabling and ride times out by mid-September. I think probably about like two weeks, 10 days. Last year, we really tried to push it a little bit earlier because we had a lot of uh, limitation on move-in time and schooling and that sort of thing. We wanted to give people the time to adjust their travel plans. This year, we're reverting back to what would be a little bit more typical. Um, so, you know, 10 days, two weeks out, we'll have that stuff published for you guys. All right. Any final questions before we wrap this up? All right, folks. Is the stall decorating judged just on the outside of the stall? Yes. There will be more information that comes out with that. It, there's not a ton of rules, but there's, um, we've had issues in the past where like displays have like crept well out into aisleways and involved like massive props and that sort of thing that weren't like impeding traffic and were completely just well outside of what was really necessary. So, we have some basic rules around just like keep it within the shed row and keep it safe and like don't let it obstruct things. Um, but we'll have more information published about that. All right, folks, well, we're going to log off. Uh, I think at this point, you know where to find Raina if you need her. And um, believe me, we are very diligent about making sure you have what you need to know when you need to know it. There will be additional emails coming out, additional, um, you know, we will do at least one more kind of logistical webinar with you in September just to cover our last uh, little details and that sort of thing, but we will be in touch regularly and often over the next 70 days or so. So, um, but otherwise, if you need anything, um, please don't hesitate to be in touch and we'll talk to you soon. Good luck. Thanks, guys.